It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Miranda warnings and internal investigations, what rights does an employee retain? Must an investigator warn an employee that concealing information from company lawyers conducting an internal investigation could be a federal crime? Even if the company attorneys provided the now standard corporate upjohn warning, does a company attorney asking questions morph into a de facto federal agent during an internal company investigation regarding alleged FCPA violations? And is the attorney there? by required to provide a Miranda warning to employees during said investigation. These are some of the pitfalls potentially pace, faced by counsel, both in-house and outside counsel and corporations when an employee admits to wrong during an internal investigation where such conduct is reported to the government and the employee is thereafter prosecuted criminally under laws such as the FCPA. Case law regarding the Upjohn warning should be indicates that the warning should be given to employees during an internal FCPA investigation, but what about other warnings? Employees who are subject to being interviewed or otherwise required to cooperate in an internal investigation may find themselves on the sharp horns of a dilemma requiring either one, cooperating with the internal investigation, or two, losing their jobs for failure to cooperate by failing to provide documents, testimony, or other evidence. Many U.S. businesses mandate full employee cooperation with internal investigations or those handled by outside counsel on behalf of a corporation. These requirements can exert a coercive force, often inducing employees to act contrary to their personal legal interests in candidly disclosing wrongdoing to corporate counsel. Moreover, such a corporate policy may permit a company to claim the government a spirit of cooperation in hopes of avoiding prosecution in addition to increasing the chances of earning meaningful credit under the U.S. Sentencing Guidelines or the FCPA Corporate Enforcement Policy. Where the U.S. government compels such testimony through the mechanism of inducing a corporation to coerce its employees into cooperating by with an internal investigation by threatening job loss or other economic penalty. The in-house counsel's actions may raise Fifth Amendment due process and voluntariness concerns because the underlying compulsion was brought on by a state actor, namely the U.S. government. Utilizing corporate counsel and pressuring corporations to cooperate, the government is sometimes able to achieve indirectly what it could not achieve on its own by inducing employees to waive their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and minimizing the effectiveness of defense counsel assistance. What are the pitfalls if private counsel compels such testimony and it is used against an employee in a criminal proceeding under the FCPA? Investigative counsel, whether corporate or outside counsel, could face state disciplinary bar proceedings. A corporation could face disqualification of its counsel and then disqualified counsel investigative results. Dick Casson may have summed it up best when he noted the moment a company launches an internal investigation, its key employees, whether they're scheduled for an interview or not, should be warned about the federal consequences of destroying or hiding evidence. With up to 20 years in jail at stake, that seems a small thing for the people in the company. What if the company gets an investigation wrong and wrongfully identifies an employee? At least in a few states, the wrong employee can sue for defamation, but not in Texas. As demonstrated in a civil case, companies and internal investigators need to be aware of local laws, regulations, and requirements. In the Shell Oil versus Writ, it held an internal investigation report Shell provided to the DOJ about potential FCPA violations is absolutely privileged in a defamation proceeding and cannot be used as the basis of a defamation claim by an employee, even if the company gets it wrong. The employee Writ had alleged Shell defamed his character when the company voluntarily reported to the DOJ the findings of an internal investigation that the company conducted into its relationship with Panalpina, an investigation which culminated in the company's 2010 FCPA settlement with U.S. enforcement authorities. Rick claimed that Shell's internal investigation report falsely implicated him in the payment of bribes and accused him of providing inconsistent statements during multiple interviews conducted during the course of the investigation. The trial court initially granted summary judgment in favor of Shell 
dismissing Ritt's suit on the basis that Shell enjoyed an absolute privilege to make statements to the Department of Justice on its internal investigation. The Texas Court of Appeals overturned this decision, refusing to characterize a voluntary pre-prosecution internal FCPA investigation as a ju judicial proceeding. Instead, the Court of Appeals held that Shell was only entitled to the qualified privilege under which a speaker can still be held liable for defamation if the speaker knows the matter to be false and does not act for the purpose of protecting the interest for which the privilege exists. The Texas Supreme Court held at all relevant times shall have been a target of an FCPA investigation by the Department of Justice and it asserted this investigation, which eventually resulted in a criminal settlement with Shell, satisfied the standard that the possibility of a proceeding must be a serious consideration at the time of the communication when it was made. This would seem to be exactly bringing the Shell investigation under the Miranda warnings as if there's an absolute privilege, there would seem to be an absolute need for a warning. At a time when the DOJ and SEC have become increasingly vocal in calling for companies under investigation to secure and provide evidence of individual culp culpability as demonstrated by the Yates memo and its progeny, a decision that did not provide Shell with absolute privilege could have far-reaching imp impact on how companies conducted internal investigations and cooperate with authorities. As it stands, the Texas Supreme Court decision in the writ case may incentivize cooperation by companies in the early stages of enforcement processes, providing certainty to potential corporate defendants, particularly those located in Texas, that good faith efforts to disclose the results of internal investigations and expose individual culpability will not leave them open to defamation claims. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, always remember that you have to provide an ex upjohn warning. Number two, if an employee demands counsel to represent them during an investigation, who's going to bear that cost? I hope you've thought through that before the demand is made. And three, always check state law requirements and other information around internal investigations so that you don't run into the shell versus writ problem going forward. This is Tom Fox. I hope you will enjoy this month's offering on hotlines and investigations. 31 days to a more effective compliance program. If I could ask you to do, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation in compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 days to a more effective compliance program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>